Hello, welcome to Psychiatry of LMCHK Part One. And this part will be the we will cover the Part One multiple choice questions MCQs for Psychiatry LMCHK. And broadly speaking, we have divided into the MCQs. Divided the MCQs of LMCHK Part One into six subtopics. Six subtopics. They are assessment of management, mental disorders, substance and alcohol alcohol misuse, the psychiatry of demographic groups, and five the interface of psychiatry and physical illness. And last but not least is psychiatric management. Actually, we we have included um, we have included a lot of questions, a lot of questions for all the six sub subjects here we have listed. And for for this course, we will majorly focus on the assessment and the management. That is the first topic. Okay, let's take a look. Question number one: Psychiatry. A 54-year-old man presents with a variety of physical symptoms that have been present for the past nine years, and numerous investigations and review by a variety of specialties have indicated no organic basis for, for his symptoms. This is an example of here is a very good here is a very good question for a whole lot of a whole lot of for the for testing a whole lot of concepts here we have we have used um, different uh, we have marked up the very important info like this is a man 54 year old man with a variety of physical symptoms present for past nine years now, even with the present nine years nine year presence of the physical symptoms. Numerous investigations are review, reviewed by a lot of a variety of specialties have indicated no physical, no organic basis for symptoms. That means it is these symptoms are unexplained, unexplained symptoms. So these unexplained symptoms, in terms of these unexplained symptoms, we consider psychiatric problems okay here we have question a to e the munchausen syndrome hypochondrial di disorder dissociative disorder somato somatization disorder and conversion disorders in all in order to make the correct choice we've got to really understand that the accurate definitions and differentials uh, differentials between the different choices let's take a look unexplained symptoms to sum up when we see unexplained symptoms it should be somatization disorder when it comes to unexplained symptoms just on the contrary if there is an this is an if there is an underlying diagnosis such as cancer the, the patients are concerned about very specific diagnosis then should be hypochondria hypochondria so the answer for this question is somatization disorder why because there is out there there are unexplained unexplained uh, symptoms the patient is concerned about persistent and unexplained symptoms rather than underlying diagnosis like cancer otherwise if the patient present with concerns over underlying cancer or other other diseases then we'll choose hypochondrial disorder but when it comes to Munchausen, which is choice Munchausen's syndrome which is choice A we we have to know that for Munchausen syndrome, they have, the, the patient have to has to have to intentional production of symptoms. 
inten intentional production of symptoms, which falls under the name of Munchausen syndrome. What is Munchausen syndrome? Another name for it is factitious disorder. Okay, there are a, a, a quite a lot of quite a few quite a few psychiatric diseases for patients who have symptoms that that have no organic cause that have no physical cause that no organic cause can be found here are a few let, let us take a look that have the definition specific definitions and features of these um psychiatric psychiatric terms one is somatization disorder multi that, that should be for somatization disorder multiple phys should that should be multiple physical symptoms unexplained for at least two years somatization disorder patient and patient normally refuses to refuses to accept reassurance or or there will, there will be repeated negative test results somatization disorder multiple physical multiple unexplained physical symptoms together with refusal to accept reassurance or repeated negative test results this is somatic somatization disorder but for hypochondrial disorder there should be persistent belief persistent belief in the presence of underlying serious disease like cancer and normally also patient again refuses to accept reassurance or there will be repeatedly negative test results um, for conversion disorder for the signs and symptoms there will be for patients for patients there will be loss of motor or sensory function and an important point is that the patient normally does not consciously faint does not consciously fake the symptoms actually otherwise if you know if the you know if the patient intentionally or consciously fake the symptoms that will be factitious disorder or if the patient intentionally fake the symptoms and seek material gain then we call it malingering malingering is so for a conversion disorder the patient have to be have to be like this patient does not conscious patient does not patient does not consciously feign the symptoms otherwise it will be factitious disorder or or uh, um, malingering if the patient at the same time seek material gain and patient normally for a conversion disorder patient may be indifferent the patient do not care indifferent to the apparent disorder and difference even though there has not this has not been backed by some studies conversion disorder loss of motor and sensory uh, function loss of motor and sensory function the patient did it unconsciously or subconsciously the patient does not consciously fake the symptoms and normally the patient will be indifferent if the patient is really suffering from conversion disorder okay what about dissociative disorder dissociated the definition for dissociative disorder will be this is a process of separating a certain part of memory from normal memory from normal consciousness the suppression or suppression of the certain memories from normal memory from from normal consciousness so and here is a, also a difference for uh, patients with disso dissociative disorder the patient will normally have psychiatric symptoms like amnesia, fugue, stupor and here is a very, the most severe type for disso dissociative disorder is DID dissociative identity disorder 
Another name for it is a multiple personality disorder. Um, and this is actually DID or MPD. Actually, is the most severe form of dissociative disorder. 人格分裂病又叫做多人格障碍 multiple personality disorder. Munchausen syndrome. And what about Munchausen syndrome? It is also known as another name for Munchausen syndrome is factitious factitious disorder, and in which there will be there should be inter intentional production, intentional consciously conscious production, intentional production of physical or psychological symptoms. That should be should be conscious, should be intentional, purposeful. And what about malingering? Malingering is that is intentional, of course intentional. That you is intentional and fraudulent. Simulation or simulation or exaggeration of symptoms, and they are the patients with malingering are seeking financial or other gain, seeking material gain, right? We have to know the difference. The seeking material gain for patients with a malingering, but for Munchausen syndrome, simply the patient is doing, is having, is、uh, having intentional production of physical or psychological symptoms. Okay, here is another question. Question number two. Which of the following is not a recognized feature of anorexia nervosa? Ah,、uh, 神经线神经性厌食症有哪些特点？下面哪一个不是它的特点 ？Which of the following is not a recognized feature of anorexia nervosa? A. Hypokalemia. B. Low LH. C. Impaired glucose intolerance. D low FSH, FSH, E reduced growth hormone levels. Ah,、uh, for anorexia nervosa, most things we we have to know that most things are are low, and G and Cs are raised. That will be elevated growth hormones, elevated glucose level, or there there will be a glucose intolerance. There will be. Uh, salivary glands, salivary enlarged, salivary glands enlargement, enlarged, enlarged salivary glands, and there will be increased level of cortisol, cholesterol, keratinemia. Okay, so if if you know these things, the question will be very very easy. Should the answer should be answer E. The growth hormone should be elevated, should be increased, should be raised. Anorexia nervosa is associated with a lot of cl clinical signs and psychological abnormalities. Here we have a summary: the, you, the patient should have reduced body BMI, body mass index, cardia, hypotension, enlarged salivary glands. And for Uh, from the perspective of physiology, that there will also be abnormalities. You see hypokalemia, low FSH, LH, low estrogen, and testosterone. And there will be elevated or raised cortisol growth hormone, and there will be impaired glucose intolerance, glucose tolerance, glucose intolerance actually. Ah.、Uh, Hyper, that will be increased cholesterol cholesterol level. That will be hypercholesterolemia, and there will be hypercarotinemia. And you're gonna see low T3 level, which is the thyroid hormone, a low thyroid hormone level. We have raised Gs and Cs. Otherwise, for other things. We have low level of other things as a whole. Okay. Question number three: Which of the following symptoms may indicate mania rather than hypomania? Okay. This is this is asking us to make 
different differentials make differentiation between mania and hypomania choice a predominant predominantly elevated mood b delusions of grandeur c increased appetite d a flood of ideas e irritability here the major difference between hypomania and mania will be um psychotic symptoms delusions of grandeur auditory hallucinations okay these are the major two differences between the two between hypomania and mania because patients with mania normally will have e have either delusions of grandeur or auditory hallucinations and the following symptoms are common common for both hypomania and mania the, the mood for patients with both hypomania and mania will have uh, elevated mood and irritable patient will feel irritable irritable and for patients with high, both hypomania and mania patient will have pressured speech and thought a flight of ideas poor tend to have poor attention inattentive inattentive for behavior behavior patient will, will have difficult uh, difficult uh, sleeping they have insomnia a loss of inhibitions patient will have sexual promise promiscuity promiscuity and patient will have you know a lot of things like overspending very high patient will feel pretty high uh, they will have risk-taking actions and behavior a patient most of the time will have increased appetite for both for both hypomania and mania these are the common symptoms but what 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 are the different different symptoms for mania between mania and hypomania they are delusions of grandeur and auditory hallucinations patients with mania will have either either this delusions of grandeur or auditory hallucinations okay question number four a 45 year old man who takes chlorpromazine for schizophrenia presents with severe restlessness what side effects of any psychotic medication is is this an example of this is asking asking us uh, asking the candidate the student of the side effects of antipsychotic medications side effects uh, to be more specific side effects of, uh, of drugs for schizophrenia okay choice a akathisia choice b neuroleptic malignant syndrome choice c acute dystonia d tardive dyskinesia e parkinsonism parkinsonism okay for the side effects of, of drugs used in treat in the treatment of schizophrenia we have to know that antipsychotics are dopamine 2 d2 receptor antagonist they block the dopaminergic pathway in the uh, mesolimbic pathway and for com conventional antipsychotics we have a lot of side effects especially to be more specific the side effects well most of the part will be actual parameter side effects that's why we're not now we have now used we have now used atypical antipsychotics as the first line drugs like clozapine clozapine okay now we use Generally, now we use atypical uh, antipsychotics to treat schizophrenia as the first line drugs. Okay, what? Well, so, in terms of the extra pyramidal side effects, what are they? What are they? What are the extra pyramidal side effects? There are Parkinsonism, acute dystonia, akathisia, tardive dyskinesia, Parkinsonism. Uh, symptoms mimicking Parkinson's disease mimicking and patient will have acute dystonia like 
Turret, Torticone, Torticonis, Shiji, Torticonis, an Alcuno Jerich crisis, Alcuno Jerich crisis, Yen, 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 what is akathesia? Akathesia. It simply means totally on severe restlessness. Severe, severe restlessness is akathesia. And another one is tardive dyskinesia. What is tardive? Tardive simply means delayed. This side effect actually normally happen, happens pretty late. During the late period of the drug, drug, drug use, so it is actually the late onset of choreal acetoid movement. This involuntary, involuntary movement. To be more specific, that will be chewing, chewing of the mouth, pouting of jaw, and this may happen in forty percent of the patient. And and sadly, this side effects can be irreversible it might be it might be irreversible in 40 percent of the patients tardive dyskinesia can happen in 40 percent of the patient and it's pretty sad it might be irreversible these are the side effects what we call actual pyramidal side effects parkinsonism acute dystonia uh, Akathesia, tardive dyskinesia. Okay, and here that's why we have we have specific warnings from medicine, the medicines and healthcare products regulatory agency from the UK. Warnings when antipsychotics are used in old patients, in elderly patients, there are increased risk for both stroke and venous thromboembolism. This increased risk for stroke and venous thromboembolism. So we have to be careful when we try to use antipsychotics in all patients. And what about in addition to actual pyramidal side effects and uh, the increased risks for uh, the use of antipsychotics in old patients? What are what are the other side effects that might be tested? They are here here are the other are the other side effects that might be tested it's and then anti muscarinics it raised prolactin your leptic malignant syndrome the reduced seizure threshold okay what what are the specific anti muscarinic some symptoms the dry mouth dry mouth the nerve vision urinary Retention and constipation. They are like you know anti-parasympathetic, anti-parasympathetic. So that's uh, anti-muscarinic. And also, patient will have sedation of weight gain, sedation of weight gain. And patient normally for uh, might also have ganatorrhea, ganatorrhea, iru. Why? Because there will be increased level of prolactin. Okay, a pretty severe, a pretty severe uh, side of, side effects will be neuroleptic malignant syndrome, neuro neuroleptic malignant syndrome, the paraxia muscle stiffness, paraxia muscle stiffness. Okay, and a pretty uh pretty cautious, um pretty severe. Also, a pretty severe side effect that should, you know, that we should be cautious of is um, antipsychotic can reduce the threshold of uh, seizure in patients, especially in those atypical psychot antipsychotics. So we have to be careful. The patient might have might have increased risk increased risk of seizure. Next question. Question number five. A 25 year old man demands a CT scan of his abdomen in clinic. He states it is obvious he has cancer. 
it is obvious he has cancer despite previous negative investigation. This is the number of what? Okay, this is an unexplained diagnosis of cancer. Okay, the patient is suspicious. It's quite quite suspicious and he states it is obvious that he has cancer. And with the background, what is the background? Previous negative investigations. So this is quite this is an easy question. Uh, if we know that the definitions of each choice, hypochondrial disorder, conversion disorder. What is hypochondrial? It is un, uh, unexplained, an obvious diagnosis of cancer. What about conversion disorder and Munchausen syndrome, dissociative disorder, and somatization disorder? Okay, let's review these questions. It's hypochondrial, right? The patient is the patient is really highly suspicious of him suffering from cancer. Okay, let's review this, uh, the definitions of these terms again. Somatization disorder, what are these? For, for somatization disorder, there should be multiple physical symptoms for at least two years plus refusal to accept reassurance or negative test results. In this patient, 在这个病人，我们有 negative test results. 大家可以看 previous negative investigations. 这个病人诊断诊断有 negative test results. 但是呢, belief in under a nine uh, presence of under nine serious disease cancer. So the answer for this question should be hypochondrial disorder. Let's uh, let's see what we have. For conversion disorder, so the signs and symptoms should be loss of most of the typically loss of motor and sensory functions, and does not consciously fake the symptoms. Does not consciously uh, feign feign the symptom. Otherwise, otherwise, if the patient consciously consciously feign the symptoms, this will then it will be uh, factitious or disorder or malingering, right? A patient normally will be indifferent to the apparent disorder, even even the the disorder the disorder has not been backed up by the lab tests and the CT scans, blah blah. A lot of test studies, so that the patient will be indifferent to the results. But what do we call it? Is in French word is la bena en défense, défense. This is a fire. Right, la bena on the hands. Indifferent to his uh, disease. Dissociative disorder. Uh, we have we know that the definition there will be separating of certain memories from consciousness. This is quite quite obvious. You have to really know it. And there will be other psychiatric symptoms for disso dissociative disorders. Like amnesia, fugue, stupor, stupor, amnesia, fugue, and your C, uh, Meng Yu Zheng, uh, then the, and the most severe form for, uh, disso dissociative disorder will be multiple personality disorder, 多人格障碍, 又叫做 dissociative identity disorder, DID. This is this is dissociative disorder. Ah, uh, ah. We can see Munchausen syndrome. Munchausen syndrome. Munchausen syndrome. Your new one's name is called factitious disorder. Then, its characteristics are conscious or intentional production of physical or psychological symptoms. Then, it is deliberate. Munchausen syndrome is deliberate. It is deliberate to create a physical or psychological symptom. Munchausen syndrome. 那么 Munchausen syndrome 比较具体的一种特别的表现是 malingering。为什么呢？不仅是有意的作假 ，fraudulent fraudulent simulation or exaggeration of symptoms， 他是有意这么做的。同时，他是希望获得 financial or other gain， 希望获得 material gain， 获得好处，经济方面的好处，这些方面的好处，叫 malingering malingering。Okay, question number six. A 
or a 34 year old man confides in you that he experienced childhood sexual abuse. Which of the following features is not a characteristic feature of a post traumatic stress disorder? This is called as PTSD. Post traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, it's a very important thing. Let's take a look at the, the choices. We have A, hyper arousal, B, emotional numbing, C, nightmares, D, loss of inhibitions, E, avoidance. Okay, let's take a look what we have for in terms of the feature of post traumatic stress disorder may develop in people of any age after or following a traumatic event. Like, for example, to be more specific, a major disaster or childhood sexual abuse. So they they tend to have the following the following um features. Okay, after the first actually uh the PTSD, the slang the slang was created after only after the first world war. After the war, we call they they call it they call it shell shell shock. What is shell shock? Shell 就是炮弹。炮弹轰炸过之后的有这样一些 PTSD。那么呢，根据 DSM-4 的诊断标准 （Diagnostic and Statistical Manual） 这这个诊断标准，那么呢，这个症状呢必须要持续一个月以上啊，没有一个月以上我们不能诊断 PTSD。好，它的特点呢是有这样一些特点，大家要记要要弄清楚有这样一些特点 PTSD。Post-traumatic stress stress disorder, re-experiencing the uh the images, and avoidance of uh, avoiding people, situations, or circumstances, hyper arousal, is hyper vigilance for threat, exaggerated startle response, and emotional numbing. What does what does this mean? It's lack of ability to to experience feelings. 也就是说，不能体会其他人的感受啊。Feeling detached from other people. Okay, depression, EV, drug or or alcohol misuse, 酗酒或者是嗑药 Anger, unexplained physical exam, physical symptoms. Okay, what is? Let's see. The patient should normally should have to have re re experiencing flashbacks, nightmares. Repetitive and distressing intrusive images. A patient will avoid, av will be avoiding people, situations, or circumstances that resemble that resemble or as that uh, are associated with the event. A patient will be very vigilant for threat. A patient will have exaggerated startle response. This, uh, this. These are the features for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, how do we, how do we manage PTSD? How do we manage? Okay, um, we uh, for we 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 normally do not recommend a single session uh, in intentions after a traumatic event. So normally we 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 do we have watchful waiting. Watch for waiting. We just wait and see. Wait and see for a patient with mild symptoms less than four weeks. That is why to make the to confirm the diagnosis, we need at least have the symptoms to last at least one month. One month. Okay, for patients in the ministry, they have access to treatment provided by the armed forces. Okay, normally we uh we can use CB CBT or EMDR for severe severe uh EMDR. What is CBT? It's cognitive behavior therapy, focusing on the trauma they have explained experienced. But for severe cases, we have eye movement desensitization or reprocessing therapy, short as EMDR. Eye movement desensitization and reprocessing therapy (EMDR) for severe cases. 
Okay, and um, PTSD, we don't, we don't prescribe drugs at the fir routine first line, but, uh, uh, but if drug is indicated, we use paroxetine or metazopine, metazopine, okay, or paroxetine, if drugs are indicated. We don't use these drugs, the, the two drugs for uh, routine first line, but if drugs are indicated like CBT or EMDR fail, failed, if CBT or EMDR both are failed, both have failed, then we, we, we might we'll consider using the drugs like paroxetine or metazapine. Okay, question number seven. 25 year old man with a history of schizophrenia is prescribed olanzapine. Which of the which one of the following adverse effects is the most likely to occur? Okay, this is asking the most likely side effects of um olanzapine. Olanzapine. Okay, let's let, take a look at the choices: A. Anorexia, B. Parkinsonism, C. Hypertension, D. Weight gain. E a granulocytosis. Ah, this is called come and go. Since when the drug's side effects are the most common side effects, olanzapine, olanzapine is the most common side effect. Let's look at it. Okay, we have a question. We have the answer for it. Weight gain is the most common and extremely common side effect for atypical antipsychotics because olanzapine is is an atypical antipsychotic, the lansapine. Now, uh, normally we use an atypical antipsychotics for as the first line drug in patients with schizophrenia. According to the 2005 NICE guidelines, what is NICE? The National Institute of Clinical Accidents, Yingguo Guojia Lingchuang Zhuo Yue Yan Jiu Yuan. Nice. 啊，请注意这个机构，我们后面讲课的时候会再提到。Nice. Okay. What are the the advantages of atypical agents? Why we use we now use atypical antipsychotics like olanzapine as the first line drugs for schizophrenia? Why? Because they have less side effects. What are the major side effects of typical antipsychotics? They are actual pyramidal side effect for typical antipsychotics. That's why, due to the due to the many and severe many and some are severe side effects of actual pyramidal side effects produced by typical agents. That's why. But for atypical antipsychotics, they are now used as first line drugs for schizophrenic patients. But for atypical drugs, we also have adverse effects. What are those? Weight gain, extremely common. And for clozapine, which is an, which is also one of the one of the atypical agents, is associated with a granulocytosis. Okay, 我们有我后面讲到的时候会提到这样这样一些机构，大家要熟悉一下。Okay, we have specific warnings for for the antipsychotics uh, used in older patients, elderly patients, according to the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. What are these? Increased risk for a stroke and venous thromboembolism. This is what we have talked about. For stroke, the specific and specific drugs are olanzapine, risperidone. These are all. These are all. Atypical antipsychotics, risperidone, olanzapine, and so for clozapine, you have to worry, also worry about agranulocytosis. The Okay, what are what are what are the the atypical antipsychotic agents? They are clozapine, for which about which you have to be worried of is a side effects of a granulocytosis and olanzapine and risperidone. Be aware of the increased risk of stroke, especially. And also for all the all the atypical antipsychotics, you have to be 
aware of increased risk of stroke and venous thromboembolism, olanzapine, clozapine, risperidone, and ketiapine, amisulprine, amisulprine. These are five drugs popular, five drugs popular for as atypical antipsychotics. Because as we know, atypical antipsychotics are now being used as first line treatment, first line agent for the treatment of schizophrenia. But they, of course, they have weight gain, also weight gain, and the most common side effects of these atypical antipsychotics. That's why for this question, we the answer will be answered. Choice D. And for other things that we have to be aware, especially like clozapine, clozapine, be aware of agranulocytosis and neutropenia. So if we use clozapine as as doctors, you really have, as doctors you really have to be aware of, be aware and have full blood count monitoring will be essential. Full blood count monitor will be essential during the treatment close up uh, treatment of schizophrenia using clozapine. So due to this, clozapine should not be used in patient should not be used if other drugs have not been tried. So it should should only be used in patients resistant to other and atypical antipsychotic medication. Due to this, we don't use it so much, even though it is a close upon it is a typical antipsychotic agent. Okay. Okay, here is summary we have for a close upon adverse effect, a granulocytosis for one percent of the patient in neutropenia for three percent of the patient. And also there will be reduced seizure threshold. Reduce seizure threshold. Actually, uh, for patients using clozapine, there will be there will be seizure seizure in three up to three percent of the patient using clozapine. So be careful, take care, be cautious. Neutropenia, granulocytosis, seizure, increased risk. Question number eight. 39 year old man comes for, for review six months ago. Be aware of the, of the time. Six months ago, he was started on paroxetine for depression. This is an SSRI agent. Around five days ago, he stopped taking the medication as he felt that it was having no benefit. It's only past medical history of no asthma. For the past two days, he has experienced increased anxiety, sweating, headache, and the feeling of a needle-like sensation in his head. During his consultation, he's pacing around in the room. He's pacing around in the room. What is the most explanation for his symptoms? 那么这是一个非常典型的呃断药症状 ，discontinuation syndrome， 断药症状。这些这些药呢，这些啊、呃，这些。这些药呢，断药之后会产生一些症状。那么呢，因为这个 p a r o x e t i n e 是一个 SSRI， 选择性五羟色胺再摄取抑制剂。那我们看一下这个选项 ：A. Bipolar disorder, B. Malingering, E. Night migraine, 啊、uh, D. Migraine, E. Generalized anxiety disorder。因为他有这个用药时自己自行停药，自行停药之后产生的这些症状，那么这是非常典型的 discontinuation syndrome SSRI discontinuation syndrome. Okay, paroxetine has a we have to know that has a very high incidence of dis, discontinuation symptoms within among all the SSRIs. Okay. Now, even though SS, we know that SSRIs now are being used as first-line treatment for depression, but there are two drugs which are preferred choice. Preferred choices: they are citanopram, citanopram, 
and flu oxide. These are preferred. Why? Why? Because they have less drug interaction. Like you know, as we know that citalopram is used for is uh, recommended used for elderly patients. Why? Because they have low risks of drug interactions. And serotonin is also used recommended for a post MI. Why? Because uh, it is safer. Safe, generally considered to be safer than other antidepressants. Okay, we have to be for uh, for children and adolescents, very young, uh, small children and adolescents. We have to be really cautious. If we really want to consider using SSRIs in these patients, if we if really antidepressants are indicated, we have we normally choose flu oxide flu oxide. These are why because uh, they have they have less drug interactions. They are safer flu oxide and citalopram are preferred SSRI. We've got to know these things. Okay, for a children and adolescent, fluoxetine will be the drug of choice. D O C, drug of choice, if indicated. Even though we still have to be cautious to use SSRIs, fluoxetine in children and adolescents. Okay, what are the adverse effects of SSRIs? They are GI tract uh, side effects. What are these? Increased risk of GI bleeding, especially the patient is using an onset, onset or aspirin. If the patients are really using onset together with SSRI, we strongly recommend a PPI proton pump inhibitor to be used to be co-prescribed together with the onset or aspirin. Otherwise, the risk for GI bleeding will be much higher. Okay, we have to be also extremely cautious and be vigilant for increased anxiety and agitation if we start SSR and start start an SSRI. And we have recommended we have recommended fluoxetine and citalopram. To be preferred drugs, preferred SSRIs, fluoxetine and paroxetine have higher have higher drug drug interactions. Drug drug interactions. It's unlike citalopram and sertraline, they have lower drug interactions, and more suitable for patients with uh, chronic diseases or elderly patients. Why? Because they have most of the patients with chronic chronic diseases or elderly patients, they take a lot of other drugs. We to avoid drug interactions, we choose citalopram and sertraline. But for uh, children, for children or adolescents, we uh, recommend fluoxetine. Okay, for the interactions of SSRIs, take care, take care. Really, you have to take care. Okay, according to NICE guidelines. National Institute of Clinical Accidents. If the patients are, if the patients are taking onset, fei仔体类抗炎药，包括阿司匹林，啊，包括阿司匹林，啊，包括阿司匹林，啊，我们如果要用用一般不要不要给同事服用有非仔体类抗炎药的人士用这个SSR。如果确定要用的话，那么一般要同时开一个氢离子泵抑制剂PPR，比如说奥美拿州。那么，那么为什么有这样一个问题呢？特别对于啊慢性疾病的患者或者是老年病人，那么他们往往慢性疾病往往有
Merta Mertazol Pond， 不 Mertazol Pond。我们这个时候，如果病人用花法林或者甘肃用来抗磷的、抗磷的这样的病人，我们推荐用其他的其他药物，比如说 m e r t a z o p a n 那么当然和上面安赛一样的，如果说用阿司匹林的，我们要尽量避免用服用阿司匹林的药物，尽量避免用这个 SSRI。要用哪个药呢？用其他的。即使要用的话，要开个概率啊。嗯啊，清理子泵、抑制剂，对病人服用舒马曲坦、曲坦、舒呃舒马曲坦这些啊偏头痛的药物，我们也尽量用，应该避免 SSRIs。如果确实要用的话，用其他的抗抑郁药。啊、嗯，我们要开始这个抗呃对这个病人进行抗抑郁治疗了，那么我们推荐一般来说用药开始之后两周之内，两周的时候，两周之后。要给予评估 ，review by doctor after two weeks。那么，如果这个病人是年轻病人，低于三十岁 ，under the age of thirty years or at increased risk of suicide， 自杀倾向比较有自杀倾向比较比较比较高的这类病人呢，我们一般呃在用药一周之后就要要重新评估，注意这个时间两周，高危病人一周就要评估。那么，如果病人对这个给的我们选择的用药，我用选择的用药，抗抑郁药效果比较好，一般来说我们要连续至少用六个月，再考虑停药。为什么呢 ？Why? Because this reduces the risk of relapse， 防止用这个病人复发。那么最后一个。When stopping the SRI SSRIs， 那么我们停药，我们一旦用用的时间比较长了之后，考虑停药的话，要怎么停呢？要在四周的时间之内 ，OK， gradual tapering， gradually reduced within over a four week period， 通过四周慢慢慢慢的减药，减药不能一下减，除非你用的是 f l u o x y t a m f l u o x y t a m 除了 f l u o x y t a m 其他的 SSRI 用于抗抑郁治疗，在停药的过程当中，啊，在四周的时间内慢慢减。OK， 停药的一些症状呢 ，discontinuation symptoms， 啊，我们给大家讲过 ，increased mood change, restlessness, difficulty sleeping, unsteadiness, sweating, gastrointestinal symptoms， 这个胃肠道的一些症状，比如 pain, cramping, diarrhea, vomiting。Parasthesia， 这是一个停药的一些症状，停药的一些症状，这个我们前面有考题看到过。Okay, question number nine. You are considering prescribing a T 呃 T C 呃 tricyclic antidepressant for a patient who has not responded to two different types of selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Which of the following tricyclic antidepressants is most dangerous in overdose? 好。那么用了 SSRI， 用了药物之后呢，效果不好啊，效果不好，效果不好，考虑用药，考虑换药，换成什么呢？换成三环类抗抑郁药，换成 tricyclic antidepressant。那么下面哪个三环类抗抑郁药容易产生 overdose 中毒剂量呢？产生过量呢？啊，哎呀 ，A d o s u l a p i n e d o s u l a p i n e Imipramine, clomipramine, nortriptyline, dofopramine. Okay, dosulap, dosulapine. Dangerous in overdose. Very dangerous in overdose. Uh, no, no. As we have introduced TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants, are used less and less now for um depression. Why? Because they have too many, sometimes severe side effects of. Actual pyramidal system, and also toxicity and overdose of the drug. But in smaller smaller doses, they don't run. They don't they don't run so high a risk for、uh, toxicity for overdose. So that is why TCAs, tricyclic and different, are now more and more used widely used in the treatment of neuropathic neuropathic pain. Here are some side effects for a tricyclic antidepressant: drowsiness, dry mouth, 
when there's vision and constipation uh, retention. The last four were actually like parasympathetic side effects. 像副胃交感神经系统兴奋的时候的一些一些副反应啊 ，anti muscarinic, anti muscarinic, and also drowsiness, sedation. Okay, how do we choose a tricyclic antidepressant? Okay, we use amitriptyline at low dose for neuropathic pain and for the prophylaxis of headache. And both both tension headache or migraine. Low dose amitriptyline for neuropathic pain and for prevention of headache. And nofepramine, nofepramine has a has a no incidence of overdose. But、uh, amitriptyline, amitriptyline, and dosulapine, 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 also named as the thiopine, should be very, very, very seriously considered in terms of its danger, its danger in overdose. So here we have a table to compare the side effects, the side effects of. Um, tricyclic antidepressant for、uh, side effects of sedation or、uh, drowsiness, drowsiness, tryptamine, clomipramine, dosulapine, and trisodol. They have very、uh, more more severe side effects of sedation. For imipramine and nofepramine, nortriptyline. Yeah, more on that less sedative side effects. Okay, less sedative. So that's why in this question, choice is quite is dosulapine, dosulapine and amitriptyline, most dangerous for overdose toxicity. Amitriptyline, amitriptyline, dosulapine. Okay, question number ten. A 23-year-old male presented with a general practitioner two weeks after road traffic. Accident concern about concern about increased anxiety levels, lethargy and headache. At the time, he had a CT brain scan after banging his head on on the steering wheel. 我头撞到了一个司机的方向盘 ，which revealed no abnormalities. 那么他头撞了撞到那个方向盘上面了，但是呢 ，CT 呃脑部 CT 检查没有什么异常的。Six months following this episode, his symptoms have re re resolved. What did his original symptoms likely represent? 那么他有两周，他车祸的这样一个车祸史，这样一个病史，而且呢，做呃做检查呢，没有发现器质性病变。那么这个这个题目选对是很容易的，是 post concussion syndrome， 脑震荡，脑震荡之后有些症状。而且症状很明显，六个月之后他的症状就已经缓解了，是吧？所以选对是没没什么问题的。但是呢，我们来一起看一下其他选项 ：conversion disorder, conversion disorder, post traumatic stress disorder, somatization disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, post concussion syndrome。它的特点是什么 ？headache, fatigue, anxiety, depression, dizziness after trauma, after trauma。Sometimes, most of the time,、uh, minor head trauma. Okay, but for、um, signs, for symptoms,、uh, for symptoms, symptoms in post-traumatic stress, the the symptoms tend to to run in a very long period period of time. That's why we choose post-concussion syndrome in this question. Question number ten. Okay, thank you. This is the, this is the end for this part. Thank you for listening. See you next time.